everyone, and welcome to the Disney Dudes. All the way from California, I'm Kevin. And all the way from Florida, I'm William. So, third episode. We're on a roll. What kind of roll? Like the ball from Indiana Jones roll. But um, tsh. Oh man, I can't believe all the support we're getting so far. Yeah, we actually got one of our first messages on Facebook. Really? That's cool. Someone was asking about how, about what to do for the parks. And, well, basically they just wanted to know if they should stay one day or two days. I think it should be good for two days or one day, depending on when, when you're going. But I think the best time to go, literally, for Disneyland is November. Because no, I call it No Guest November, because no one goes in November. Because everyone's home for Thanksgiving, and that's when they're recording the Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's actually the Christmas Day Parade. Yeah, the Christmas Day Parade. I, sure. That's the best time to go. I would have to say, for Walt Disney World, the best time to go is right after spring break. It's not crowded in February, but after all the spring break, the parks are kind of dead. Because... I made the mistake one time going during spring break, and it was packed like sardines. Mm, must have been tough. Uh, do you know how crowded it is in Disneyland right now because of spring break? I've actually had this crowd problem with, happen to me before, because it was right after the Christmas parade one day. This an entire group of... this Almost the entire main street was full, literally. We couldn't move. It, it was that full. But we managed to get out okay. Yeah, so don't go on holidays, kids. The more you know. Ba -da -da -da. So, I'm with the show. Come on, let's go. Roll it. So, Billy, do you have any news for us? I do have some news. It's actually overseas at Disneyland Paris. Really? Really, really. Oh, do tell. I shall. So, Disneyland Paris is set to swing into spring with a new festival starting April 5th, 2014. Ooh. So, yeah, from April 5th until June 22nd, 2014, Disneyland Paris will celebrate spring with the Spring Festival, a new event you might as well call Flower and Garden Festival Light. Ooh. It's sort of, every time I think about springtime at Disney, I, it always makes me think about that scene in Bambi where it's all springtime. And, and then you hear Al, would you knock it off? Woohoo! <laughs> so, here's the cool thing. Tobiaries representing 101 Dalmatians, Baby, Simba, and Nala from The Lion King, the Aristocats, and Mary Poppins will brighten the streets of Main Street, USA during the event. Oh, so I did have somewhere to go with that, Bambi. You did. It's like you knew. So, a daily highlight will be a musical event with over 90 dancers and Disney characters in new specially created costumes, Mickey and Minnie, Alice and the Mad Hatter, Woody and Jesse, Pinocchio, Clarabelle, Stitch, Rapunzel, and many more will delight park guests along with the Jolly Holiday Band and Swing Into Spring Orchestra. Huh. This is totally not related to Disneyland Paris, but Disney. I just found out that Star Wars Episode 7 will happen 30 years after Episode 6. They're gonna be old. It'd be funny to see Han Solo acting like an old guy. <laughs> he'd be like, where's my meds? And then he'd be like, I shot first. And they're like, uh, but we, we, did you forget to put the straight jacket on this guy? He's like, I shot first. <laughs> he did shoot first. Hello? And he looks at Guido. Where am I? <laughs> oh, well, but do you have any news, Kevin? I do. Well, okay then. Tell the world. Well, Pixar has announced two sequels. There's going to be a Cars 3 and an Incredibles 2. Wow. 
I'm not sure about Cars three. Uh, I don't. I never liked Cars two. I felt like they went overboard when they did the whole spy thing. I felt. I, I felt that ne- that should never existed in the Cars world in the first place. Mm-mm. But some fans will be fans. Some people will be people. John Lester will be John Lester. So also. The Incredibles 2, this is a sequel that I've heard many people have been wanting. I've been wanting this sequel. Me ever too. since I saw ever since I saw the ending with the Underminer, I kept thinking, is there gonna be a sequel where they fight the Underminer? I, it might they don't know what the villain's gonna be. It might it might still be the Underminer. Gosh, I hope not. And um Disney is already working on a frozen two. Now I I am a little bit disappointed in Disney because of this. I know a lot of people are going to hate me, but I think they're going too far. I, but also, I'm going to be able. I'm going to be talking about this later in actually a separate video, which is also a new part of our channel. Should we announce this now? No, let's wait until the end of the episode. Okay. So also, one more thing of news: Disneyland used to have a star on top of the Matterhorn. And like during Christmas time, it it would sort of happen around the seventies and eighties, and it, it's something that sort of never caught on during Christmas time. But now they're going to bring it back, which I'm really excited for. Probably they're going to activate it at nighttime. I think that'll be the perfect time, because what are you going to do in the daytime with a giant star over a, a snowy mountain? I don't know. What would you do? It'd be kind of random, you know. Or you you met you never know they might turn in it might transform into something else maybe it might be a giant tree over the mountain that could be a good idea definitely so that's all the news right now that's all the news and now it's time. For the ride review. So this episode's theme is the Tower of Terror. Inside this door is the key to imagination. You're about to step into a world of wonder and mystery. That's my impression for you. So, anyways, the ride it's it's different in both California and Disney World, but it also takes place in different lands. In Disney World. It's in Hollywood Studios, and in California, it takes place in California Adventure. So basically, the ride is you are part of an episode of of the Twilight Zone, and what you do is you take part in an elevator accident, and basically, the ride takes it makes it takes you straight down. It's a free drop. 13 stories high, and it's, it's a wild ride from there. The, the story is a little bit different in every land, or in, in each park. So, from up here in California, our version basically has, it just goes up and down, and we learned about the Hollywood, the accident in the Hollywood Tower itself. And we are going to take part in the real, in the real deal. Of the real event, so it's probably the same thing in Florida. But I know it that is. your version. We learn about the accident. We get on the service elevator, and we actually go to the Twilight Zone. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people listening to this episode has been on the ride itself. Mm-hmm. Our elevator leaves the elevator shaft, and it swivels, and it turns, and it goes this way and that way. Pretty much it's the intro to the Twilight Zone. And then a beam of light opens up. And then a narrator says, And now it's your turn. Do, 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 do. And then we for it. It drops you. <laughs> Ding. And you look outside. Oh look, it's the world of color. Ah! Ah! In your version, 
it's pretty much the same drop sequence. But for us, it's a random draw sequence. But I hear for California Adventures Tower of Terror's anniversary, it's going to get a random draw sequence as well. Yep, it is. I did hear that also. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure if it's going to be real or not. A lot of people are talking about it, and I also heard some Imagineers talking about it too. Oh, really? Really, really. So what do you give your Tower of Terror? Um, the one in California, and I've never been in the one in Florida, but overall, I'd have to give the ride a 7 out of 10. I'm not a big fan of this ride. It scares me all the time, but I love the story. I love the theming and everything. I love the Twilight Zone, but the ride just scares me a lot, literally. But I'm not, a, I'm not really a big of a fan, but yeah, I'd have to give it 7 out of 10. What about you, Billy? I'm not a big fan either. Trust me, number one, I'm not big on heights. And number two, I'm not really big on dropping. I actually rode this ride out of frustration because I'm usually the guy who's holding the bags at the end of the ride. I went on. Big mistake. But I'll admit it, my eyes were closed for most of the ride. Mostly the dropping part. I definitely had white knuckles. So my rating for this ride would have to be a 5 out of 10. I know it's not a 7 out of 10. I don't like it whatsoever. Yeah. Harsh. Yeah, I really, really don't like it. Alright, well, there's the ride review for you. Hello everyone, and welcome to Kevin's Kingdom Hearts Corner. I've got my Wayfinder with me, so... Let's do this. So for today's Kevin's Kingdom Hearts Corner, this will be my first top 10 video. So these are the top 10 hopes, or the top 10 of my hopes for Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's get to it. And those are the top 10 things that I want to see in Kingdom Hearts 3. So, that's the show. So, Hal, did you hear about the new D23? I sure did, pal. But all I know is that it's in August. Can you tell me more, pal? <laughs> really? Really, pal. So, can you help a mouse out? <laughs> so basically, what you're doing in the event is that you're... It's a whole convention full of a lot of Disney people, celebrities, and basically, a lot of things from movies. What is it? Props! Well, hot dog! So there's a whole museum taking place on the second floor called, um, why, well, gee, I forgot what it was called. But it's where we have a lot of things from all these movies, like Return to Oz and Pirates of the Caribbean and High School Musical. That's cool. Also, there's a lot of events and you could take part in them. So basically, people like John Lasseter go up on the stage and tell you all about the future of what's going to happen in Disney. Gosh, that sounds fantastic. 
<laughs> What's also really cool is that they tell you before the press. Oh my gosh, I sure do hope I make it to the D23 convention. That's how I heard about planes too. I also heard you can learn about new attractions coming to the parks. Oh yeah, they also have um, they have Imagineering stuff there. They have um, they have all the animatronics and a bunch of other things. Gee, I'm so grateful. I'm friends with myself. Uh huh. Well, you're talking to your 3D self. Yeah, you can say it brings it to a whole nother dimension. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but in your world. I guess you do a lot of the films, but in my world, I have to find a heartless. That sounds like a hard job, but hey, thanks for telling me about the D23 convention, pal. I hope you can make it, and I hope you the viewer can make it too. <laughs> All right, here you go, pal. Bye bye. See you, pal. And now it is time for William World Rumors. So there's a new rumor date for the Seven Doors Mine Train. That date is April 14th. Why is it April 14th? Because a new Disney pin will be released on April 14th, depicting the Seven Doors Mine Train. Could that also be a release date? Here's another rumor for you. So there's a rumor going around that Tangled, Frozen, and The Little Mermaid are all connected, kind of like the Pixar Theory. If you haven't heard the Pixar Theory, ugh, your brain's going to explode. Trust me. But yes, Tangled, Frozen, and The Little Mermaid are all connected. I don't want to get too deep into this whole new theory about it, but it's a lot to take in. And that's all the rumors I have for you for Williams World's Rumors. So, what happens when you come across a... Gotcha! I can't believe another episode of the Disney Dudes is in the books. I can't believe it either. So, again, we want to thank you guys for watching and listening. But before we go, we want to talk about a new thing that we're bringing to the channel. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. So tell them all about it, Kevin. So, we are going to have a new sort of segment outside of the Disney Dudes called A Walk in the Park, where one of us will be personally talking about a subject that we might be talking about, like, say, maybe Blu-ray or a certain ride that will come out, or just basically maybe a Disney character in general, or just something to easily talk about, because it's a, it's a walk in the park, just a talk in the park with us, walking and talking. Should we also tell them about the other project we're working on? No, we shouldn't. Let them wonder what in our creative minds we're creating for them. It's, it's a, a mystery! mystery! Ooh, yeah. I think we should save this for another episode. Not next episode, but how about the episode after that? <gasps> oh, you know what? If you, if you guys could actually try and guess what our other project might be, we might actually give you a personal thank you. Look at a shout-out on the episode! Oh, <gasps> yes, a shout-out! <laughs> yeah! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thanks again for listening and watching another episode of The Disney Dudes. But before we go, don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at The Disney Dudes. You can also follow us on Facebook and search us up for The Disney Dudes. And don't forget to subscribe 
to our YouTube channel so you know when all the newest Disney Dude YouTube videos go live. All right. Well, until next time, TTFN. Tots off for now. <laughs> <laughs>